zero voltage switching is achieved by the use of a resonant converter and special switching control. The switching of an active switch, say n channel MOSFET, is controlled in such a manner that while turning on, the voltage across the MOSFET goes to zero. After that only, the drain current will start increasing. Also while turning off, we slow down the rate of rise in the drain to source voltage of the MOSFET so that there will be very minimum overlap between drain current and voltage. This type of soft switching reduces the switching loss in the power electronic converter. So let's see how it works. To understand zero voltage switching, we'll take an example of a resonant buck converter circuit. There are different types of resonant buck converters, but we'll specifically look into M-type resonant buck converter, in which the resonant inductor and capacitor are connected in series with each other. The PWM strategy of the converter is designed in such a way that the resonant circuit goes into resonance. Every resonant converter is consists of three blocks, switching network, resonant circuit, and finally the rectifier circuit or filter circuit. In the case of resonant buck converter, this is the switching network, this is the resonant circuit, and this is the rectifier slash filter circuit. The capacitor is connected parallel to the active switch. We already have a basic understanding of a simple buck converter, right? If you clearly remember the working of the buck converter, you can skip to this timestamp. But still, we can brush up on some basics. The buck converter provides step down voltage at the output. This means when the Q1 is turned on, it is charging the buck inductor and also providing the constant output current while diode D1 is off. When the Q1 is off, diode D1 turns on and the buck inductor discharges to the load providing constant current at the output. This operation keeps on repeating until we get the constant output power. We'll consider this as the steady state of the converter. For simplicity, we can replace this LC output circuit and load with a constant current source because no matter what, a constant current will flow through the output of this converter. To understand the working of zero voltage switching resonant buck converter, we need to divide its operation into four different modes. Just as we saw in the last video of zero current switching. We'll ignore all the boring math part of the differentiations and integrations and we'll focus on the actual circuit working as well as its voltage and current graph for easy understanding. Before mode 1 starts, considering the steady state, the MOSFET is on. The current flowing through the resonant inductor, which is also equal to the drain current of the MOSFET, will be output current. The output current will be constant and the voltage across this resonant capacitor, which is parallel to the MOSFET, is zero. This voltage is called the drain to source voltage of the MOSFET. Now mode 1 starts by removing a gate pulse of the MOSFET Q1 to turn it off. This time the current will start flowing through the capacitor as soon as MOSFET shuts down. You might be thinking the input is DC, then how does this current flow through this capacitor? Well, initially when the switch transitions from on state to off state, the capacitor acts as a short circuit because voltage provided to it is changing from zero to some value for a small interval of time and the capacitor starts charging up to input voltage. The voltage across MOSFET Q1 increases gradually. The inductor current stays constant equal to output current until time t1. Now second mode starts. In this case, the diode d1 turns on and output current is provided by this resonant inductor and the buck inductor. In this mode, the resonant circuit resonates. Assuming all the math behind it is worked out, 
so the current will look like this in the sinusoidal manner due to the resonant tank. The capacitor voltage builds up beyond the input voltage and the current flowing to the inductor decreases. A very small amount of current flows from here. At time t a, the capacitor voltage reaches the peak value and inductor current reaches to zero. After this, the capacitor starts discharging and the inductor current is being forced in the opposite direction. Until the capacitor discharges to the input voltage, the current keeps on flowing in the opposite direction. As you can see, during this mode, that is resonance stage, the direction of the current flowing to the resonant inductor changes. Finally, at time t2, the voltage across MOSFET reaches to zero because it is completely discharged. Now in mode 3, although the capacitor is fully discharged till time t2, there is possibility that the inductor still had some energy left in it. Now the body guard of the MOSFET comes into picture. So the remaining inductor current flows to this body diode. This current keeps on flowing in this direction until the inductor is discharged and its current falls to zero. The time when it falls to zero can be considered Tb. So a turn on pulse should be provided to the MOSFET intelligently in between time T2 to Tb. As the inductor current reaches to zero, mode 4 starts. The gate voltage is provided to the MOSFET, hence it turns on and diode turns off. The current flowing to the drain of the MOSFET starts increasing and it reaches close to the output current by time T4. This pulse is on as per the duty cycle requirement. And finally, when the gate voltage pulse is removed for the next cycle, first mode of working starts again and it keeps on repeating to provide the required power at the output. If you look closely, the zero voltage switching is achieved with the help of precise control of the MOSFET and this resonant circuit at second mode. When the drain to source voltage of the MOSFET completely reaches to zero, after that, the drain current starts increasing. And that's how a zero voltage switching works in a basic resonant converter. I have added all the references related to these circuits in the description. If you have any query, you can ask me in the comment section or email me. Hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And finally, thank you so much for watching this video.